Hello everyone, my name is Pixhorifs, so welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. And I'm basically in the middle of recording the last episode you saw about the sheep shearing device, but I have just had a bit of an interruption and I kind of want to uh, want to address this in a separate episode. Welcome to a brand new feature of Minecraft 1.14, the Wandering Trader. This guy will appear kind of at random, and this is the first one I've encountered since updating my world, so it's absolutely a, an opportunity I want to take advantage of. These guys will appear somewhat regularly around villages, but randomly in other places of the world, in close proximity to a player, within about 48 blocks of a player. This guy literally just spawned in the forest as I was setting up to do the time lapse for the sheep shearing and they will actually have a completely random selection of trades from a small list of stuff, but they will trade random stuff each time. So there are different materials that they will bring in from further afield that you might not be able to get otherwise. Take, for example, this guy is selling blue ice or packed ice rather not blue ice for three emeralds he's selling flowers for an emerald he's selling oak saplings for five emeralds each dark oak saplings might be a little bit better of a trade as they are kind of difficult to find if you haven't explored your world more extensively and then wheat seeds and pumpkins they're kind of lower tier trades but these guys are worth taking advantage of if you see them around the place because they will actually have a huge variety of stuff and sometimes stuff that is not possible to get elsewhere in the game renewably. Stuff like blue ice will sometimes show up and that's kind of difficult to farm so it's worth taking advantage of those trades if you've got the emeralds to spare. And notably wandering traders will never buy goods from you, they're only ever selling stuff in exchange for emeralds so it's going to be worth taking a look at their trades anytime one of them shows up just in case it's got something that you need in that moment. In some cases, the trades from wandering traders can be pretty desirable. You can buy nautilus shells from them, or slime balls, or even coral blocks, podzol, or blue ice. There's going to be a lot of different things that show up in their inventory, but these six trades here are not exactly the most attractive thing in the world to me right now. That's not going to be a problem though, because as his name suggests, this guy is a wandering trader. He is going to disappear relatively quickly, and there's actually nothing you can do to keep him around. He will despawn even if you name tag him. Even if you trap him in a box, he will eventually just disappear. I'm pretty sure the llamas do now despawn as well. A few people have mentioned that in their snapshot worlds, or perhaps in bedrock edition, the llamas did stick around, but I'm pretty sure that the llamas will now disappear with him thanks to the full release fixing that particular bug. So we should take advantage of taking a look at the Wandering Trader while we can, but unfortunately we're not going to get to see him for too much longer. When he reappears though, which he will at some point, especially if we hang around villages for long enough, it's going to be worth trading with him to see what he's got next time. It is even possible for this guy to drink a potion of invisibility, which is something he does at night to protect himself from mobs, but it is still possible to see him, so it's pretty cool to see him just drag these llamas around. You can usually tell where he is by it with the position of the llamas and the leads, and of course the invisibility particles if you've got particles enabled, but for the most part you don't, you don't want this guy getting attacked by mobs. If he is killed, he will drop a couple of things, but it's nothing that's worth killing him over, and of course that's not going to affect the respawn of a wandering trade in future. But thankfully this guy has a pretty neat defense mechanism. He will even take an invisibility potion if he's in the nether to prevent him getting attacked by anything that is nearby and hostile. But unfortunately I don't have the same luxury. I don't have an invisibility potion on me right now so I'm gonna go and sleep because <laughs> it looks like the zombies are already out to get me. Looks like he's managed to successfully evade the zombies although his invisibility potion wore off so a couple of them were chasing him around a little bit there. Thankfully they were burning in the sunlight so yeah, this guy is worth protecting if you want some extra trades. Note that his trades will just lock up and they won't refresh like other villagers' trades do. So it's worth just trading with him while you've got the opportunity to and then unfortunately you won't be able to do any more trading with him. Also, you'll probably be able to see that leads in the game are a little bit buggy right now and we know this from handling other animals as well but the leads attached to these llamas have actually glitched out and while they are still active and the llama will still follow the wandering trader 
they no longer appear because I moved too far away from him and the chunk unloaded. So even though this guy is still around, even though the chunk unloads, he is still here. But unfortunately, it looks like the llamas are being pulled along with an invisible thread now. Oh, go on then. I'll buy some packed ice from you. Fine. <laughs> we might as well, while he's here, get some trading done. But as you can see, no trading refresh, no sleeping for this guy, no working at a workstation or anything like that. He doesn't return to the llamas and refresh his trades. That's just it as far as the packed ice trade goes. So we got six out of that and <laughs> not exactly the best deal in the world but maybe he'll come back with some other supplies another time but anyway we've spent enough time hanging around with this guy it looks like he's actually managed to wander far enough away that the leads have broken and the llamas are just wandering free but they will all despawn within about an hour maximum so i think we're probably just going to leave this guy to his business it's been nice hanging out with you my friend but i've got an episode to do and the episode I want to do is actually going to be a lot of fun. In fact, that's probably going to be what we end up doing for this entire week. Now, we've seen the new villagers. We've seen some villagers that we've carried over into this update change. We've seen some of the new villages that generate. But what I want to do is create a village from scratch somewhere in the world. We can create a village basically from nothing and really get down deep into how the village mechanics work now in 1.14. We'll learn a whole bunch about villager professions and trading and stuff along the way, and then when we come back here at some point, we'll be able to put together our brand new iron farm. And there are some very promising designs coming from the community now, so I'm really looking forward to exploring that and seeing what's possible. We may come back and build it here, because it's in the spawn chunks, and that's going to be where you have a reliable, renewable source of iron you know, being farmed constantly, but I think what I want to do is go a little bit further afield to start a village, specifically because there are villager costumes for two locations that do not actually naturally spawn or generate villages of any kind. Normally you will get villages spawning in tiger biomes, plains biomes, savannas, deserts, and now snowy biomes as well, but there are also additional villager costumes associated with both the jungle biome and the swamp biome and i asked on twitter and on my youtube community page where people wanted to see me do a village in fact the only thing i asked with no context was jungle village or swamp village and the results came down pretty heavily in favor of jungle in both places and naturally people were a little bit keen to see a swamp village because i'm already kind of building one over here i mean old town is located in a swamp and some people were quite vocal about wanting to see a swamp biome in action and I I kind of agree I kind of wanted to see a swamp thing myself but most of the people voted for jungle so I came up with a compromise I went into mine atlas and I located a place where there is a jungle biome that borders on a relatively small swamp and what we can do is build our village and breed some villagers basically on the edge of the jungle and the swamp biome so depending on where the villagers breed they will probably end up getting different occupations. Now this particular patch of the world is a good distance away. It's about 8,000 blocks south and I think about 5,000 blocks east. So we're probably going to have to take a trip through the nether and that to me seemed like the ideal time to get the subspace bubble advancement for traveling seven kilometers in the nether. Every block in Minecraft is one meter so seven kilometers is 7,000 blocks. That's pretty easy to do. And so I've been making some preparations and I have myself two shulker boxes here. The first First of which just contains some basic building materials, a few torches and lanterns as extra stuff, a crafting table and some emeralds because of course once we get our villagers we will want to be trading with them, and as many of the workstation blocks as I could remember. In fact I think this is more or less all of them, I'm pretty sure there are 13 villager professions but I'm probably missing one here and there. I remember the cauldron and the brewing stand even though those were in a previous update but I think the rest of these are all the new blocks. That, they, uh, that they've added into the game with this update. So I think we are pretty well prepared. Naturally, I've got a few more workstations for the more desirable professions or the workstations that are slightly easier to craft. I have myself 10 lecterns because I know we'll probably want to generate a lot of librarians. I've also got myself a few composters because farmers are going to be quite useful. The barrels I just had lying around, likewise the looms. One other thing we do need to bring with us is a decent supply of wool for beds. And it just so happens that I set up a sheep farm the other day. So I'm going to swoop down here and let's go 
with cyan. Okay, looks like we've actually got a decent amount of wool in here. Fantastic. Oh, I'm going to take all but one of that, so we will have plenty of supplies to make beds with. I think this should be okay. One last thing I do need to make sure I bring with me is some obsidian so we can make a portal in the nether and also a flint and steel so we can light it. But aside from that, I think we're pretty well kitted out. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. I also have a second shulker box with the materials I need to cure zombie villagers because when you're creating a village from scratch, it's probably going to be most likely that you will cure some zombie villagers in the area. It's either that or bring existing villagers from another biome and transporting villagers around is going to be a bit of a pain. So I decided what I would do instead is hang around, try and find a zombie villager, trap it and then cure it during the day. So I think that's the approach we're going to take. Good luck to me, I guess. We'll see how this works out. But I reckon we can make it work. We're experienced enough with the game at this point. And also, if you drag some villagers from an existing village in a different biome into a new biome, their costumes don't update automatically or anything. I'm pretty sure you have to breed new villagers in that biome first. And so it's going to be kind of fun to start from scratch with some zombie villagers from a jungle or a swamp who already have the costumes when you convert them. And then we can create a brand new jungle slash swamp civilization for ourselves. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Where's my flint and steel at? There we go. We've got a couple here in the farmhouse. I will grab one of those and for now we will say farewell to the farmhouse and the villagers that I have here. Lovely though it is to hang out with them. I'm off in search of something a little different. The jungle biome in question, the one we are looking for, is at 5479.20 in the overworld. Both of those coordinates are on the positive axis, and that equates in the nether to coordinates of positive 675.990. That's going to be a bit of a trek, <laughs> but I think we can make it work. And as long as we stay around sea level in the Y coordinate, around Y equals 64, 63, that kind of region, we should also come out on the surface. That's kind of the problem with the nether stuff. Occasionally, you'll make a nether portal, it'll turn up in a cave just because of the elevation of the terrain around there. But you should be more or less fine if you know where you're going and you're at the right elevation. Obviously, if you make it super high, then the game has a chance to spawn a nether portal completely in the sky. But I think we can make this work. And while we're establishing these early nether portals, as long as my elytra are fully mended, which they are, I think we can probably have a safe bet at just flying there, especially through these more cavernous sections of the nether. So we'll see how we get on with that. It could be a little bit dicey here and there, but we basically need to head 600 blocks in a straight line southeast that way. So I guess we'll see how we get on. Of course, folks, you don't always have to do it that way. Oh, you can tell we're generating new nether chunks because the lava falls are just about starting to generate. <laughs> One poor pigment over there is going to get a little bit flooded out. But yeah, you don't have to... Whoa, <laughs> jumping over lava lakes here. You don't have to do this advancement by traveling in the nether and establishing a nether portal on the nether side first time. You could always fly there in the overworld, set up a nether portal at that, that's that distance away and then take it back to your home base at spawn or basically however whichever way around you want to do it then that's fine but I kind of like the idea of trekking through the nether to get this one so yeah it's on me if we end up encountering some really risky terrain like this I don't even have a fire resistance potion on me right now so that might not go too well but we're already approaching the coordinates where I think we need to be we're only about a hundred off from both of them now so yeah, I'm thinking it'll probably be somewhere down there. Okay, that's 990 on the Z axis, so that means 675. It's about 40 blocks this way on the positive X axis. Fantastic. Let's dig our way through here. And there we go, 675, 990. We are quite low down right now, which is making me feel like maybe we should dig up a little bit if we want to make sure that we are gonna be okay here. I'm a little bit wary of lava falling on me from above though, so let's make this as safe as we possibly can. Okay, just so I don't get too confused about where exactly this location is, I've taken the coordinates there and we should be able to get back to this if I need to fly home through the nether for any reason. But at the end of this tunnel, I've made myself a lovely new regular natural stone staircase. <laughs> Although if I was a smart guy, I would have done it with the stone cutter instead of the crafting table so as not to waste materials. But up here at Y58, I figured it would be fine to make a nether portal roughly here. So let's see where we come out of this thing. 
Hey, we did it. We got the advancement and of course... I'm in a cave. <laughs> I knew it was going to work out that way. 22. Why 22? Okay, well, that was not the most ideal of circumstances, was it? But, I don't know, a bit of caving while we're here? <laughs> Probably not, considering the amount of netherrack that's in my inventory right now. Let me put some of that in a shulker box. And it's a good thing nether portals generate some light, because otherwise this would be... A rather dark cave, were it not for the lava, I suppose. Well, of course, those of you who have paired nether portals before will know that all we really need to do is take down this nether portal and move it up to the surface at the coordinates that I took earlier, the actual coordinates that we set up for the portal, 5400, 79, 20, and we should be able to pop this on the surface and return to the portal I made in the nether. But the nether portal itself is not the most important thing about this location. What is the most important is that we ended up exactly where I wanted us to be. And if I hit F3 right now, we are in a swamp. And then if I head maybe in a north direction, if I head over there, jungle edge. There we go. Okay, that's <laughs> that's the confirmation I needed that we are in the location I have marked out for this village project. So we're in business. Now let's get out of this cave and let's check out the surroundings. Well, at least I know there's a nice healthy cave system here. If I want to do any digging, it's a little bit winding, but I feel like we're making progress towards the surface. I don't want to wander too far away from the biome though. At least I've got the coordinates okay. So we shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Aha! The surface. Light. And it's actually daytime, which is nice. I was a little bit worried that we were going to emerge in the middle of the night. But it looks like the sun is now coming up. I could mark the entrance to this cave, but with the nether portal taken down, we don't need to worry too much about that. Here we are on the edge of a jungle biome, looking lovely as always. And... A wandering trader shows up! Oh, fantastic! This is a sign, ladies and gents. A sign that we need to make a village here. This is perfect. I I honestly think some of the stuff in this series, man, it feels like it's staged, but there is no way of staging this. The, the wandering trader is just here. He's followed me all this way. What have you got for sale, my friend? Okay, now you're talking. Now there are some interesting trades here. For a start, we have... Three emeralds for a fire coral block, which is going to be very cool. A, a renewable way of getting coral now, so you don't have to harvest it all out of the oceans. Although, as with other trades, this one's going to lock up after you buy, like, five or six of these, maybe. In a similar way, red sand is now renewable thanks to wandering traders. If only we could keep these guys around, I swear. It'd be so good. And also, for those of you who are playing on Peaceful, wandering traders trade gunpowder. So with no ghasts or creepers to get it from, the wandering trader can be your source of gunpowder. I should also mention that for people playing Skyblock challenge maps, the Wandering Trader is going to be a lifeline if you can get some emeralds somehow. So if you manage to get a zombie villager, cure it using whatever resources you have to hand, and then a Wandering Trader shows up, you can buy a lot of renewable resources that will make your Skyblock experience a lot more fun. So, yeah, anyway, this guy, this guy is going to be sticking around for a little while, but this is going to be the site of our brand new village, and... I gotta say, I quite like it so far. This little jungle edge biome is nice and peaceful. We got a swamp right next door and we should, it, it, the, the jungle actually wraps around it like that. We should be able to spawn some zombie villagers here if we keep the area relatively dark right now. Obviously we'll need to set up a base camp of sorts and I think we'll end up making village dwellings at some point, but I think at first it's going to be a pretty bare bones operation. We're gonna be looking exclusively at the mechanics rather than making this a build project. Cause if this was a build project to start off with, I could be here for weeks, months even, but I don't want to do that necessarily for this series because we've just got done building the castle instead. I might make a few, like, rudimentary dwellings for them, but what I really want to focus on is exactly what villagers need to go about their daily routines. So we will do our best to figure that stuff out. But to start with, I've got to establish a little base here, I've got to establish an area that might be a little bit more mob-proof, just so that we can guarantee I've got somewhere safe to run and skip the night and that kind of stuff. So let's get to building. Bit of a telltale sign here, some stone on the surface and some bubbly noises. There was a bit of a lava lake here and there's still a little bit of lava tucked away around here. Now I do want to get rid of this really quick because that could be 
a little bit perilous if we end up... Uh, oh, there's quite a lot of it, actually. If we end up, uh, you know, getting a creeper explosion or something like that, either us or the villagers or the mobs that we're trying to trap could end up going in the lava. Want to nip that in the bud before it even happens. Taking down some of the trees around here as well so that we have a nice open area of, of land so that we can see any mobs that are coming towards us, catch sight of any zombie villagers, and just for the sake of neatness, I might actually remove some of the grass that's growing up around here just so we can kind of get a, a better angle on things and not get caught out by zombie babies too much, to baby zombies, because a lot of the time they will run through this grass and it becomes harder to hit them because you end up hitting the hitbox of the grass instead of the hitbox of the mob themselves. Perhaps most importantly though, we need to figure out the exact coordinates of the nether portal so we can sync that up. So it was 5400, 7920. That is why the portal didn't spawn on the surface. It's because it's out there in the middle of the swamp. <laughs> that makes perfect sense now that I think about it. But for now, I think what we can probably do is build it about here on the surface. 5400 would be about here. Yep, that should be fine. Build it up to about this high. Let's hop down and check that out. Lovely. Okay, and because this is going to be the nearest nether portal in the surrounding area, there are no other nether portals around here after all, I should be able to come out in the nether at the portal that I just set up. And we did! Wonderful stuff. Okay, let's head back through. I presume the portal is going to be linked up properly so that we will pop out on the swamp. Yep, looks like it loaded just fine. Brilliant. Okay, <laughs> this is officially a settlement that we can work with. Let's pop down a crafting table. Let's establish a torch perimeter. We shouldn't need too much more than like a a chunk's worth of area here, maybe like a 16 by 16 area. We don't even need to do that, really. Uh, basically, I just want a nice, safe, lit-up perimeter where we can guarantee that mobs aren't going to be spawning whilst I'm uh, trying to lure zombie villagers around. And one other thing I'm going to do before the sun goes down is to close the world and then log back in because I have noticed a couple of issues with mob spawning, especially once you travel through the nether. Sometimes hostile mobs in this version of the game seem to be getting stuck spawned in at the spawn chunks and then they don't unload when you move to different regions of the world through the nether. So I guess we'll have to try that and we'll hopefully be able to get some mob spawns out here now. Did anyone see where that wandering trader went by the way? Did he wander off into the jungle? <laughs> I think he might have but I kind of want to track him down before we wrap up today's episode because I feel like some red sandstone might go pretty well around here and if he's trading red sand that's definitely an opportunity we want to take advantage of. So, let's grab some of that off of you, 24. Okay, that's really not going to be much, is it, my friend? <laughs> uh, might as well take advantage of the fire coral as well. Do a little bit of trading, get some of that XP. Lovely. We can turn the swampy area into a red sand and fire coral sculpture of sorts. Oh, <laughs> looks like it's nighttime, though. He's decided it might get a little bit dicey out here, so he's going to move away. And we probably should too. But glad we traded with two wandering traders this episode. I'm glad they're popping up at long last. Okay, so the good and bad news is that we are getting hostile mobs here. So at least we know this place is spawnable right now with the issues that I've been having in 1.14. That should be resolved now. The problem is going to be waiting until zombie villagers start to pop up. Hopefully it shouldn't take all that long, but we might have to do a little bit of running around, a little bit of unspawning and respawning some of the stuff that's around here until we get what we want. The moon is also roughly halfway through its cycle. Maybe that's the half moon, so we should be seeing some slimes out here in the swamp as well, but that shouldn't matter too much. I wonder if there's a bamboo forest elsewhere in this jungle. Wouldn't it be great though if we could get a zombie villager from the jungle biome and a zombie villager from the swamp biome, cure them both, and then start a villager breeding program out here with them? That'd be pretty cool. I'm pretty sure the offspring would just have the costume of whatever biome we bred them in, so if we bred them over here in the swamp, They'd end up with swamp villager costumes, but if we bred them over here on the jungle side, they would look like a jungle villager. I think that's usually how it works. A few people were disappointed that there aren't naturally generating swamp or jungle villagers, but I kind of like the fact that it's an Easter egg that they're in the game at all, and it allows us to start fun projects like this where we can actually go out to a jungle or a swamp and begin a village ourselves. Only if I have better luck finding zombie villagers though, because right now all I'm getting is the regular guys, and they're not really good for anything. I guess the spawning of mobs and the variety of mobs is also going to depend a little bit on the local difficulty, and since we haven't been in this chunk for very long, the local difficulty is still going to be kind of low. So it might take us a few nights to see our first zombie villager out here. 
Well, it's day two of my jungle adventure, or night two, I suppose, and it's raining, which is not the ideal situation to record in, but I've managed to establish myself a little bit of a shelter here. This is going to be base camp. I guess this is kind of going to be our villager research station of sorts, and I was able to make myself a campfire so I can come out here and chill and wait for a few mobs to spawn in the local area, but... I feel like having had a couple of encounters with a wandering trader and set this up, I'm probably going to do the bulk of this off camera and come back to you with the next episode curing some zombie villagers. Hopefully we'll be able to track those guys down overnight. But that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you enjoy the direction this is going. I hope you guys are looking forward to having a village project to watch. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.